All right, you hear a lot about people glued to their phones and scrolling through social media, but uh, it's kind of just became a part of who we are now. In fact, the Pew Research says that 75% of the U.S. gets their news from sites like Facebook and Twitter, but when you're online, how can you actually promote positivity and less trolling? That's actually why we have Dr. Tracy Alloy. She's a professor of psychology at the University of North Florida today. She's here with us, and we are focusing on digital activism. Yes. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> people hear digital activism and they're just like, huh? Like, <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about what that is exactly. Sure. And I, I love that you started off with that statistic, Hattie, because it's so true. The majority of us do use social media sites for our news, rightly or wrongly so. And that is a great opportunity for companies, for people to raise awareness, just like we were doing with the sickle cell disease segment we saw a bit earlier. We want to be able to use um, social media and it's this idea of using the internet to create awareness to generate proactive and pro-social behavior. Okay, so I heard that when it comes to this type mm -hmm. of activism, framing matters. So what is yeah. framing and why does it matter? You know, I think as people, we all like to think that we are very um, rational in our decision making, but studies time and time again show that we're actually highly emotional. In fact, a brain imaging study shows that when you present someone with a problem or an issue to solve, they're gonna, uh, the, the emotional center of the brain, the amygdala, is activated regardless of who you are. Yeah. Um, so we, we are not as objective or as rational as we'd like to think. And so that's why framing is important. And framing is simply not what you're saying, but how you're saying it. So I gave the example of a flu shot. If you have a positive frame, that could be get your flu shot and then you'll end up healthy over the holidays. People don't pay attention to that as much. No. They pay far more attention to negative framing. So if you say, get your flu shot so you don't end up sniffling or lying in bed and missing out on all the fun people are more likely to pay attention. But what's interesting is that studies show there's also a difference between men and women and mm. how they respond to framing. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So women are far more responsive to negative framing. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it could be the, the concern for loss. If we don't, we're kind of uh, you know, loss averse. We want to minimize that sense of loss. And so we, that framing it in a negative way to a woman when you're trying to get her to make a decision yeah. is going to be more likely to propel her it's to very action. very interesting. <laughs> it's like a natural worry uh, characteristic. Now, yes. it's also about knowing your audience, much like in this line of work too. You got to know your audience and I think in almost any kind of line mm -hmm. of work. Can you tell us a little bit about that very Yeah, quickly? so we just finished the study of over 350 adults from 18 up to 60 plus years of age and we found it was fascinating that when we were looking at encouraging digital activism or pro-social behavior like think ALS challenge or Generation X or Gen X S, excuse yeah. me. Um, what you want to do is know that men and women also respond differently. We found that the women were far more motivated by a need to connect. So if they would say, oh, I know so-and-so who's also struggling with that, I want to definitely support this cause. That's a way to get them on board for that uh, social cause. But men, they were more motivated by a need to protect. When they saw that someone really needed them to step up and say, hey, they need a champion, they need a hero, wow. men were more likely to step in and say, yeah, I'm going to join that cause. So it does make a difference. It's definitely not one size fits all. That's really interesting mm -hmm. because it's little things like that. I mean, you scroll through Facebook and Twitter all the time. It's not yes. something that crosses your mind mm -hmm. what speaks to you and what doesn't, mm -hmm. but it turns out that there's a chance that what speaks to you speaks to a lot of people that fall within your demographic, right? Exactly. exactly. Okay, so is there anything like, I guess, people can just a quick tidbit of information <laughs> they can take with them when the next time they're going scrolling through Facebook? Yeah, so if you really want to look for a social cause, if you want to promote a social cause, if you're trying to reach out to women for your social cause, find a reason for them to connect. Say, hey, Susie, this is Susie's story, just like we did just now. Yeah. Um, but if you want you know, if you want to generate that male connection there, then provide a, a way for them to be a hero, a way for them to rise up and protect. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> advice. Thank you so much. Thank you Dr. for having yeah. me, Hattie.